everybody um, I figure I'd do a little video for you guys um, I've gotten a couple of uh, requests um, about the details behind uh, uh, this prop that I built um, I was commissioned by Sony Computer Entertainment uh, to build two of these um, it is the arc gun from the video game The Order 1886 uh, that's due to be released soon, I think. I built two of these. Well, actually building two. The first one is done. Um, that was for the U.S. division of uh, Sony. And uh, we had that up in uh, E3. It's currently at PAX in Seattle, I believe. Uh, this is the second gun, which is for the uh, Japanese division of Sony. Uh, they'll be picking this up pretty soon. But I wanted to do this video to show you uh, the details behind it. Everything on this table is in this gun. And this is the uh, result of well over 600 documented hours from CAD time to 3D printing time to machining to woodworking, finishing, weathering and soon uh, assembly here. All of these uh, fasteners were used on this gun. Everything had to be uh, custom ordered from uh, McMaster Car uh, because the majority of the screws that are used in this prop are uh, everything from 080 uh, to 172, 348, 440, um, 630 seconds, 830 seconds, 1024, 1030 seconds. And all of these screws, there's hundreds of them, of different ones that I used. Here's all the, uh, the paints and the coatings that I used. Love Flocal, by the way. Good stuff. I don't know why they did away with that. So over here you see all of the machine parts, uh, aluminum and uh, brass. Do a close up of some of the details here. Over here is the wood working. Uh, this is the stock. It's got a pull down K grip. I don't know why they would have a K grip in 1886, but uh, kind of looks neat. Here's the uh, forward arm, forward grip. And then uh, over here is the um, uh, the veneer that I'm going to uh, inlay into the side panels. Yes, I know. Um, I didn't make the panels completely out of wood and then put the metal trim around it. Oh well. And these are the electrode rods. Uh, here's the electrodes. How to make these little damn things. They were a pain in the butt. And then they get screwed into these rods. Um, over here is uh, all the 3D printed parts. There's a lot of them. Uh, let's go over some of this. Uh, this is the uh, secondary generator spool. Uh, you can see all the little screws. I could have 3D printed those in there and painted them, but it's just not not the same. Just adding uh, detail screws like this, you know, they don't do anything structurally, but they just, you know, really look nice. And then go over them with like a, I, I, I do like this wash with burnt umber to give it a burnt look. And then this area here, what I did was I, I did burnt umber and then I made a jig, 3D printed a jig. Uh, yes, I love 3D printing. Um, I've got two machines. Uh, 
both objects. Um, phenomenal uh, printing. And uh, how I did this was I, I put sandpaper around these areas and then I chucked this in my lathe and then just did that. And what this does, this simulates um, these brushes that ride along here. And that's what that does. Also have a, sec a, a primary generating spool. It's not complete yet, but um, here's the, the spool and then this copper will get wrapped around it and then I'll go over this with burn umber. And then you have these little fingers, uh, brushes, that rub on it. And uh, these little suckers here, um, those are actually lug bolts for um, uh, RC trucks. I had to find those uh, for this little detail. They turned out pretty decent. Little 080 set screws in there. And the, uh, the finish I have here is a, if, you, if you've seen these firearms that have this plating and then over years they, they rust and, and then you, you strip all the rust off and you're left with some of the plating, but you get this pitting and stuff. Um, that's what I tried to recreate here. And it doesn't look like much now, but when you put this all together, um, it'll all pop and uh, it'll just look really cool. Here's an example. You, know, you take a look at this aluminum part, and the finish is like, eh. I used um, uh, Birchwood's Casey's um, aluminum black uh, to do this effect. Okay, so you, something like this, I used uh, graphite on um, uh, this heat sink, and then I dry brushed it a little bit. Then when you put it on here like this, you could see how it changes and the characteristics and it comes together, it looks really cool. And um, this is the uh, the power cell, a little free advertising there. And um, I put magnets in here, and this is where the battery pack will, a little battery goes in there, and the on off switch. Um, this version uh, will actually not have the the lights in it um, for the Japanese version, the American version did. And how I did that was um, I got these old vacuum tubes from a company that when I worked on Warehouse 13, uh, this guy's got like all these cool tubes and um, so I use them. And um, this here, I 3D printed this, I put a, a sleeve in here to act as a reflector and I put this yellowish orange LED in there and then I just uh, glue this in place. The wire runs out the back and then it backlights it and it looks really cool. So how that worked in the, uh, the US version I made is when you put this power cell into the bottom of the gun and you close these clamps, I use magnets for contact points. So as soon as they make contact, the lights come on as if it's powering up. And um, how I did this effect, just if anyone's interested, um, this is a bright silver Cerakote. I love Cerakote because uh, when it, it bonds the plastic really well if you prep it uh, uh, correctly. And uh, it's really scratch resistant. It's, it's phenomenal stuff. I use it all the time in the uh, film industry, um, especially if you have props that are sliding across the floor and stuff. But um, to create this effect, what I did was I used um, acrylic-based uh, paints, and um, I used, um, you can probably see it over here, uh, sea sponge. And I went over this first with a gunmetal color and just dabbed it in, waited until that dried. And then I went over this again with, um, I think it was German gray, uh, a little darker over top. And then in here, I airbrushed around the lip here uh, where it's supposed to see a lot of uh, uh, brush dust from the generator hub. Uh, it's kind of burnt in here. And you could see like on a lot of these uh, parts here, I did the same thing. Uh, it's supposed to, you know, the brushes are, are wearing out and the dust and burning has to go somewhere, so. Kind of faded it. You can see where it's more 
cleaner here and then it gets darker at the tip. Some more Cerakote, um, some wear in there. Now these are some parts I have to finish yet. Um, some of these details, it's really difficult to machine into a whole um, uh, part sometimes. So uh, instead of machining something like this, which you could see would be, I mean, not much of a pain in the butt, but you know, it's just a, it's just a lot of time. Um, I'll three D print it, glue them in place. This is aluminum, and I'll do the same speckle of finish like here. Uh, on this and it'll blend in Here's some complex machining right there It's a little pocket and what that is uh, if you're interested is when the stock uh, Plugs into the back here and this bolt goes through you can see the bolt in the top So the way to hide that is I'm going to drill in the bottom here put a magnet and then this will actually s snap in the air into that little pocket like that and it'll be held in place by the magnet on the top of the screw the bolt head so it'll hide the bolt and it also uh, clean it up uh, look a little bit here's a here's a complex machine part this is um, the uh, stock mount for this here And then this here, that'll go over there like that, down the other side. Uh, this will all get epoxied in place, and then I have actual screws that I'll use there. And then uh, what these are, are actual, um, the linkages that connect to the side panels. Because the side panels, if you're staring down uh, the back of the gun towards the front, those side panels actually pop open and they come down. And this uh, linkage here actually works. Here's another, you know, really fun CNC project right there. Enjoy, joy. Um, this is a, a finish that I used. Um, I actually did this for the first time on um, Percy Jackson's sword from the Sea of Monsters uh, when I built that uh, for the film. And I like that finish, so I kind of uh, redid it here. And uh, basically what I used was a phosphoric acid and kind of uh, dampened rabbit bedding in a Rubbermaid tote and uh, you pack the parts in there if anyone's interested in how to do that you just hit me up and I'll give you the details but it, it gives a nice effect wherever the rabbit bedding touches it gets darker and wherever it's not touching because the lid on the Rubbermaid tote is closed uh, the fumes will kind of patina the rest you just got to be careful how far you go with it because um, it will continue to uh, darken. You'll end up with like totally black. I kind of like this here, uh, so I kept it. Here's another example of how this all comes together. Now you look at this, and then this thing will go on here like that. So you could see how it blends in. Again, it doesn't look like much now, but when it's all together, you guys will see it. A little hint of burnt on the end of this. Well, that pretty much does it, guys. I mean, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. If I don't answer right away, it's just because uh, I'm busy. Got a couple good projects coming up. Uh, here's a, let me go over this little detail with you. Um, how the linkage works on here is some of this stuff doesn't see any real 
um, stresses. So I 3D printed a lot of these parts, but uh, this will go on there like that. And this will go on the front like that. And then the, the uh, rods uh, for the electrodes, they come out through here. And then the, there's some aluminum linkage that actually does see the stress. And then that'll go in there and that holds the, this is what holds this whole part to the gun. But, uh, trying to lay this out for you guys so if you're, you, know, you should get a kind of a good look about this. If you're interested in building it, um, I'd say uh, have a bottle of vodka ready. Um, I could show you this detail. This is one of the brush um, parts for the for the um, secondary uh, generating hub, and I could have I could have three D printed this whole thing as one piece and and painted it, but it it won't look like it's really mechanical in nature, and it, it just won't. So uh, 3D print these parts separate. I'm going to do this one-handed here. And you can see how that goes. And then these little guys, actually real, um, 3D printed the, the heads on these. And then I use these uh, set screws. And then this. And this all actually does function. I could do it one hand in here. I'm not going to screw this all in, but you get the idea. And now we'll lock this in place. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll post some pictures of the uh, the completed gun on the uh, the website for you guys. Uh, again, uh, if you have any uh, questions, uh, feel free to hit me up. Um, and if you do decide to take on the uh, this project, uh, um, you know, you need some advice. Just uh, again, hit me up, and I'll I'll try and do the best I can. Uh, shy of giving you the uh, the actual CAD models. Uh, I don't think Sony would appreciate that. But uh, you'll definitely have enough reference photos. So here goes, guys. Um, the ARC gun from the Order 1886. Enjoy.